Live from Washington, I'm Aisha Tanzim and you're watching Access Point. Hello and welcome. Pakistan's former military ruler General Pervez Musharraf has been ordered to appear in court on January 16. The special court formulated to try General Musharraf for treason refused to grant him exemption from court appearance. General Musharraf has been exempted thrice before, twice due to security threats and once due to a medical condition. Will he appear in court this time and what happens if the trial proceeds? We'll find out from our guests. Joining us in our Washington studios is Frederick Greer of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. He is the director of the South Asia program. Via Skype from Philadelphia, we have Dr. Raza Bukhari, President Musharraf's international spokesman. And from Lahore, we are joined by Mr. Muhammad Akram Sheikh, the government prosecutor in this trial. Welcome to Access Point. Let's start Thank with you. you, Dr. Bukhari. Will President Musharraf appear in court on January 16th? Thank you, Aisha, for having me on your program. Uh, as you perhaps know, General Musharraf is admitted in a military hospital. Uh, for treatment, so he is currently constrained. Uh, it would entirely depend, I think, on his uh, medical condition on January 16th. Uh, but it is also equally important to recognize that his lawyers have challenged the formation, composition, and jurisdiction of this special tribunal that is uh, that has summoned him to appear. So there are some legal procedures that have to be uh, have to be uh, be reviewed before actually it is clear that whether there is lawful authority that this court has to summon him to appear before it. So, Mr. Bukhari, let me get it clear. You are saying that one of the reasons General Musharraf is not appearing before the court is because he or his legal team questions the jurisdiction of the court. Well, in higher courts, the, uh, the jurisdiction, formation, and composition of this court has been put to question. Uh, his lawyers have also uh, have, have pleaded before the Supreme Court of Pakistan to review its decision of July 2009 that has led to the formation of this special tribunal. So there are a, a, a myriad of reasons that are there, but above all, it is the uh, the uh, the health of General Musharraf, which at this point uh, is uh, uh, he is not well, and he is uh, in a military hospital, still undergoing treatment. Well, Mr. Sheikh, coming to you, uh, General Musharraf has had three court dates before that he had to miss twice because, because there was bomb scare, third time because there was the possibility of a heart attack. If he does not appear in court on January 16th because of some other reason, what happens then? The court, as it has ruled today, that criminal procedure code was applicable to these proceedings, shall be bound to issue his warrants of arrest, and shall have to regulate his custody. And uh, it is not just in Pakistan that a the custody of uh, an accused is regulated. It is everywhere in the world, including the United States, United Kingdom, the civil law countries, the common law countries, and all countries where somebody is indicted. So there is a very serious high treason charge to which General Musharraf has not, not said that he has not done it. His only defense, as he has taken up before Islamabad High Court in its constitutional jurisdiction against summoning against his summoning was that he did promulgate the emergency of 3rd of November and uh, who held the constitution in abeyance but he was not alone okay so he had other people with him and we'll we'll come to that point later Mr. Sheikh but let me understand this uh, better you're saying that if he does not appear in court on January 16, there's a possibility that the court orders the police to arrest him and present him in court? That's true. That, that, is, the, that is the absolute natural consequences 
the consequence of his seven times disobedience of the court process. First okay. time he was asked to appear in the court on 13th of December. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll... Mr. Bukhari, 13th of December, then 24th of December, then 1st of January, then 2nd of January, then 3rd of January. Okay. And then the court took notice of his uh, health condition. We'll, 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 come, we'll come back to all of those points, Mr. Sheikh. Please stay with us, Mr. Greer. You just heard it. And this leads to exactly the point that we were talking before the program. If the police goes to arrest him, he's in a military institution. Uh, some people have indicated that he's in a military institution because the military wants him there under their control. And this leads into the civil military clash. What do you see happening? Well, for the time being, I don't see anything happening because, uh, we, first of all, we don't know whether General Musharraf will appear in court or not. We don't know what development might take place in between. I mean, we have heard all of us that he might also uh, uh, be prepared to leave the country somewhere <laughs> between now and the 16th. Mm -hmm. So we have heard all kinds of rumors, and I really don't know which one is true, which one is not. Uh, if things came to the fore, uh, then clearly it would create a problem. But I don't see on which ground really the military could really oppose the arrest of General Musharraf, given the fact that, as uh, the prosecutor, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shah, just said, I mean, General Musharraf has not contested the charge himself. Uh, and even his defense, which is that others have participated with him, fall under the uh, Constitution as a case of high treason anyway. Right. So. Uh, but if, he, if, if the police does arrest him this time, would it be a house arrest like last time, where he stayed in his own home um, well, that while I, the police... That I'm not able to answer. I'm not privy to uh, uh, any particular... Uh, can I, can regulation I have, in Pakistan? Yes, 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 yes Mr. Sheikh, please Masha, jump in. Yes. yes. As, the, as the head of the prosecution team, we would propose that his uh, huge Bangalore, huge palace, is declared a sub jail and he is confined in his luxurious uh, palace as a prisoner, as only as a token of his custody. By, uh, to be regulated by the court, so that the trial may proceed. So far as your question of civil military relations is concerned, it's absolutely uh, very extraneous. Why? Because military hospital is just like another hospital. It's a facility, and it's a world-class facility, health facility for cardiac patients. And anybody can go to any hospital and get himself admitted. The question that hospital has not declared him as having any condition endangering his life or rendering him unable to attend to the court. Okay, so let's and ask his Sharaf spokesman. Let's ask his spokesman. Dr. Bukhari, I want you to jump in here. Uh, President Musharraf is admitted in the hospital. His medical report has been submitted to the court. The court says he's not that unwell. He should appear. Where does his team go from here? So a couple of things, uh, uh, Aisha. Number one, I was very surprised that the tribunal did not seek an expert medical testimony before rendering its judgment. So I did not know that the, the learned uh, judges of the tribunal were also expert doctors. Number two, General Musharraf has not willfully disobeyed the, the summons of the special tribunal. Uh, the, twice there were security threats. I, I think it's important to mention that he is under active and credible threats to his life, and I think there are more than 34 threats that the government of Pakistan, of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, is actively monitoring and is trying to like protect him uh, against. Number three, with respect to what the special prosecutor has mentioned, that anyone can admit uh, themselves into a hospital is not true. You can actually leave a hospital against medical advice, but you cannot force yourself to, be, to stay admitted into a hospital. You can present yourself into a hospital, and if your uh, attending physicians feel that you are actually are healthy and should not be treated inpatient, you are left with no choice but to leave. That is a universal principle of medicine. And I know it because I happen to be a physician myself. So, so this entire uh, 
uh, argument that he is, has self-admitted himself into a hospital is entirely incorrect. Okay, let me, let me come to you, Mr. Greer. There was also an impression around Pakistan, but also in the policy circles in Washington, D.C., that this illness was going to lead to a way out of the country. Um, we saw the rumors in American media. We saw the Saudi FM appearing mm -hmm. on the scene. The timing was questioned. Uh, do you think that was uh, in the works and the media uh, kind of ruined the possibility by publishing the medical report, or do you think that was just a rumor? Well, that we don't know. I mean, clearly the Saudi Prime Minister, Saud al-Faisal, visited Islamabad. Uh, yes, the timing has been questioned. The MEA has answered that there was no, uh, no, it was a coincidence that, I mean, this trip had been planned a long time ago and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, there are all kind of rumors floating around. And I'm sure that the topic is discussed in chancelleries and so on. But we have absolutely no evidence so far. And both countries are clearly saying that this is an internal matter for Pakistan and are keeping quiet so far. So we have no uh, reason to believe that you know, they are some conspiring kind of, uh, to do something in uh, some, special some anywhere. Deal. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me quickly ask Dr. Bukhari, mm. have you, has your team mm. been in touch with the Saudis in any way? I'm sorry, I missed your question, Aisha. Could you repeat it? Uh, has your team been in touch with the Saudi government in any way? Uh, we remain, we engage and remain in touch with all the friends of General Musharraf whether they are in Pakistan or outside, uh, uh, which include, but are not limited to the Saudis, uh, the folks in the Middle East, folks here in the United States. General Musharraf has friends uh, in, in high places. Uh, but do we reach out to them to seek their interference? Absolutely not. President Musharraf went back, returned to Pakistan, because Pakistan is his home, and that is where he belongs. So he has no desire whatsoever to uh, escape or, or, or leave Pakistan. He is a resident of Pakistan. He is a citizen of Pakistan. And that is where uh, he plans to stay. I did want to very quickly come to the medical report in which that the, the military hospital has issued. He actually, it has identified that he is actually under treatment for acute coronary syndrome, which is a medical condition. And it is unfair that the court has determined that he actually is healthy. Also, the, the, the medical report has also shown that he actually has, has extensive coronary artery disease and the calcium score is age 51. Actually, the special prosecutor in one of his press conferences had raised the question that the report had not mentioned what the normal le uh, value is, and I wanted to help inform him that actually the normal level of calcium score actually is less than 100, especially in so, his left so you're saying that there, artery. So you're saying that there are things in the medical report that could indicate a heart trouble, so... Um... That there are actually acute problems, that General Musharraf currently suffers from acute heart condition okay. that requires... Uh, okay, let, uh, let, let, let's move. And, and invasive intervention. Okay, let's move forward. Mr. Sheikh, some people are saying that the timing of this trial, that yes, there was a court judgment, but the court judgment did not give a deadline, and the timing of the trial indicates some political motivation. What uh, political motivation will be indicated from the time of the trial? The trial has come in the background of an order of the Supreme Court the Supreme Court of Pakistan directed on the petition of President of the High Court Bar Association of Rawalpindi and four others that uh, General Musharraf having committed an act of uh, high treason by holding the Constitution. Yes, it did. Yes, it did, Mr. Sheikh. But let me listen. Listen, listen. just Ms. Aisha, please, just listen. Let me complete it. He, he should be tried. Federal government commenced investigation. Federal government co collected evidence. And the evidence collected is the signed documents of General Musharraf that I, I, General Musharraf, hold the Constitution and abeyance. I, General Musharraf, take over the, promulgate the emergency. I, General Musharraf, suspend the operation of that the That is true. We've read, we've, we've read all those reports, Mr. Sheikh. What I want to ask you is that what some people uh, are indicating is that 
Yes, the court um, ordered something, but it didn't say do it now, do it this year. And some people are saying that this is playing with fire for the fragile Pakistani democracy. Uh, Ms. Aisha, the Pakistan's uh, democracy has uh, successfully passed the test of uh, last regime, which was an icon of corruption. But the military did not interfere with the political and constitutional setup of the country. The judiciary did not interfere with the running of the democratic institutions, although they, they kept pointing out Okay. Uh, Mr. Greer, do you think Pakistan's democracy is as strong as he indicates? A lot of people think not so. Well, Pakistan's democracy is not certainly very, very strong. I mean, and this is, uh, I mean, we've seen some positive trends over the past few years, but I mean, this is definitely still very fragile. As for the timing, however, you're still better off doing things when you're still strong enough, that is, shortly after the election, and there is a government which is strong and legitimate because he got a real mandate in this election than some years down the line where inevitably his popularity will have eroded and so on. So I don't know whether this, uh, the timing is politically motivated, but it's certainly politically convenient because you better do things when you're still strong enough rather than when weak later on in the administration. In your opinion, do you think it's a good idea though? Was there a way out? Could the government have found a way out and not do it? Or is it a good idea to do it for the new... You know, if you are a true Democrat, then you are for the respect of the Constitution. And unfortunately, the respect of the Constitution means also the respect of Article 6. And if there is a respect of Article 6, then he has to be tried. Now, it's up to the court to decide whether or not he is guilty of what he's accused of. And there is all uh, constitutional means to get out of this crisis, also in a constitutional manner. What we have seen in 1999 uh, for Nawaz Sharif could be applied very much in the, in the, the case of General Musharraf. Nawaz Sharif was condemned and pardoned by the president. And this is a constitutional prerogative, Article 45 of the Constitution, which grants the, pre the, the president the possibility to pardon him if need be. And this is a uh, way out, which could be... But the pardon comes after he's tried and convicted. Though. Yes, yeah. which is like so he's different. tried and convicted. Yeah. So it's, if uh, it... It's Article 45, not 35. Uh, That's what I said. It's 45. Article 45. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Sheikh, saying. though, but if it's a matter of constitution, then a, lo a lot of people are saying then the constitution requires all the aiders and abettors as well, whether you start from November 3rd or uh, October... Ms. Saisha, Ms. Saisha... Uh, the principle of the criminal law is that you try, you put to try only those persons against whom you have evidence. The government could collect direct evidence against General Musharraf and documentary evidence by way of the instruments that had been personally signed by him. It could not collect evidence of the aiders and the abettors. And number two, when you do something as the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, then you do not hold a referendum whether to impose an emergency, hold the constitution in abeyance, or promulgate martial law. You just do it as a chief of the army staff, and you just uh, put the carpet under, uh, constitution under the carpet. Okay. I'm very glad that the gentleman has very rightly said that if you respect the Constitution, it contains Article 6. Okay, you have to let's, Article let's six. bring it do in Dr. Bukhari. Dr. Bukhari, I know you want to say something here. Well, a couple of things. Uh, there have been many points that have been raised, but with respect to the actions of uh, President Musharraf, he acted uh, what the Constitution, under the Article 232 of the Constitution, that empowered him to declare a state of emergency. Uh, the Supreme Court of Justice Chaudhary had actually had, had given decisions and, and given verdicts in which he himself had said that the office of the presidency and the chief of the army staff, since, since it resides in, in one person, so one person acting as the president is as if he's also acting as the, as the army chief. So there is a, a, a host of uh, interpretation that actually is open to question and hence, it, as it will go through its, uh, 
uh, its process, I think these things will let become me, more let me, and let me more come right back. Let me come right back to you, Mr. Bukhari. You want to add something here, it seems like. Well, not really. Article 232 says that the emergency has to be uh, uh, approved by the, uh, the parliament in, the, next, in the, the following 10 days. In 2007, this didn't happen. So, uh, constitutionally, this did. is strong. I'm sorry, it actually did. Not only the, the no, cabinet no, no, and no, the federal no, no. cabinet it, no, actually... No. Okay, let, let me finish, Mr. The Chief. Supreme we'll Court also validated it, and the parliament that was in place uh, on uh, November 3rd, 2007, mm. actually, through a resolution, did approve the, the state of emergency that uh, former President Musharraf had declared. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, that is on record, sir. Okay, hold on. Mr. Sheikh, you want to add something here? I just wanted to say that uh, Dr. Bukhari, with all respect to him and his professionalism, the emergency as contemplated and visualized by Article 232, 233, and 234 is the emergency which is promulgated on the advice of the Prime Minister and by the President of Pakistan not by the chief of the army staff. The action of 3rd of November was taken by the chief of the army staff. And the tragedy was that the chief of the army staff then conferred upon the power, the president, to restore the constitution. The predicament and the dilemma, if Dr. Bukhari, if that is the situation, then rest assured, Justice Chaudhary is no more there. This is, a, this is a very, very independent court. This is a court which has allowed General Musharraf bail in four cases, including uh, Akbar Bukhti's case, murder case. And then he must rest assured that he will have justice from this court. Okay. If, if there's a constitution, so ask, if it is a constitutional uh, yeah. question here. Okay, go if ahead. General Mr. Musharraf declared the emergency as the army chief, then on December 15, 2007, he was not the army chief. How come he had the powers to lift it? I don't remember General Kiani lifting the, the state of emergency. It actually was uh, General Musharraf as the president of Pakistan. He lifted the state of emergency. So, so I think that... Okay, let me uh, ask, yeah, let me ask Mr. Sheikh how that website. works. Mr. Sheikh, how did that work? The, the question, uh, you know, let me no, take asked, you back to I, let me take Mr. you Chief, back. Let ahead. me take you back to third of November. The emergency of the third of November is a legal document, and I can send it, and I can not cannot show it right now in the show because you did not forewarn me. This is a document and instrument which is part of the charge, and it is by the chief of the army staff. And the chief of the army staff has no power under the constitution. He is a very, very subordinate functionary under the constitution. He does not find even mention in the constitution. The armed forces under the scheme of the constitution are to act in aid of the civil power. Uh, Mr. Sheikh, Mr. Sheikh, for the uh, for our audience, let me get it clear. The legal document is signed by General Pervez Musharraf and it says Chief of the Army Staff rather than President of Pakistan yes, on yes, the document? Yes, yes, yes. Um, it says Chief of the Army Staff. Okay. It says Chief of the Army Staff. Let me and move. Chief of the Army Staff has no power under the Constitution to do anything, anything whatsoever. Okay, let me, let me move. On his own. Uh, let me move forward to uh, another uh, issue, Dr. Reza Bukhari. Uh, your legal team has indicated that uh, the army will not stand by if uh, President General Pervez Musharraf is punished. Uh, have you been given, has General Musharraf been given any assurances by the army? Uh, I think, you know, Aisha, this would be a question that is uh, better asked to the Pakistan military to respond. But what I can refer to is to the last statement that General Musharraf did to some international correspondents that he had spoken to in which he had mentioned that on the matter of these alleged treason charges, his feedback is that the entire Pakistan military is quite upset. There are other very credible analysts, both domestic analysts in Pakistan and analysts internationally, have also the is shown same inclination and same assessment that the Pakistan military is quite upset 
and concerned about these these trumped up charges that are brought against General Musharraf. So okay. I think the so, Pakistan so Dr. military Bukhari, let me, let, can really clarify. Okay, let me let me ask this question in another way. The Pakistani military hasn't said that they won't uh, stand by and watch this happen. General Musharraf's team has said that. So do you guys have any assurances by the military, maybe behind closed doors, that if something happens, they'll come to General Musharraf's aid? I think that uh, there is an assessment of the legal team and the people that have said within the legal team could, could better answer this question. I can tell you as a student of history that uh, certainly there are concerns within the military, and I think that actually there is something called the false of the troops. And uh, for past seven plus months, that General Musharraf has returned and he has been, been victimized for uh, through all of these uh, politically motivated charges that have been brought against him in all sorts of trivial cases, there is a, a certain lack of uh, anguish and, uh, and concern within the rank within, and file of the Pakistan within military. The military. That is the fact. Okay. What do you think? I, I think uh, hold on, Mr. Sheikh. Mr. Sheikh, I'll come right to you. Let me ask Mr. Greer uh, what he thinks is. Again, there were rumors as early as April that the Pakistanis, uh, the Pakistani military, were uh, quite upset about what was going on, and a number of ex-officers as well as active officers apparently said that yeah, they were behind us, Pervez Musharraf. Now, what we don't know is what that would mean in practice if he were brought to to uh, to court and condemned. That we. Uh, it's, it's effectively up to the military to, to say what they have to do, and so far they have said nothing. Okay. Mr. Sheikh, a couple of prominent politicians in Pakistan have also come to General Musharraf's support, and they've said, well, if you're trying him, try us too. Do you intend to? Yeah, they, are mo they are most welcome. They should, I don't need to try them. I'm trying General Musharraf, and they should just uh, voluntarily appear before the court and they should say that, yes, we were party to the promulgation of the emergency and that we helped and aided and abetted the emergency. They should come, made, make statement before the court rather than insinuating the institute, uh, institution of the armed forces. Let me tell you, I was the counsel for General Baig for 17 years, from 96 to 2013, and General Baig received a reprimand and a direction for his prosecution last year from the Supreme Court. I was his counsel, and he is one of the veteran army journals in Pakistan. Nobody came to his rescue. The institution never said, yes, don't try him, don't touch our general. General Musharraf is not any more, any connection. Although you would Amkos. agree that not much he, has been he, done against General Baig. Even after the conviction. No, no, no listen. I no, no, no. Like he is under investigation. Hold on, Dr. Bukhari. Hold on, Dr. Bukhari. Dr. Dr. Bukhari, Dr. Bukhari so I'll come is, right to you. Hold on, Dr. Bukhari, I'll, I'll come to you. Let Mr. Off. Sheikh finish. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Sheikh. Aisha, I will plug off if you just let me down like this. No, no, no. Please, please go ahead. not the way. Go ahead, It's not the way. That's not the way to do it. Mr. Sheikh, you I have... was just telling you that... Uh, Go ahead. General, General Beg, General Beg was the ex-army chief. Something was done by him as ex-army chief. He made a statement before the court, and he appeared, he appeared on 117 occasions in 17 years before the Supreme Court. Army never came for once to his rescue. Okay. And General Musharraf... We're General running Musharraf out of time, is, Mr. Sheikh, if you can wrap General up. Musharraf is, General Musharraf is the head of a political party. Thank he you very much, Mr. Sheikh. We're running out of time. I need to give just 20 seconds to Dr. Bukhari. If you can be very quick, Dr. Bukhari. Yeah, uh, Aisha, very quickly, the, uh, all those people, that is Chaudhary, Shajat, Iltaf, Hussain, and others that have come up and said that they should be tried, they cannot just voluntarily show up in the court under the High Treason Act. The government of Pakistan only has the prerogative to initiate the charges, and the government of Pakistan also has the prerogative to withdraw these charges. 
the, I think Nawaz Sharif government is playing politics by saying that now it is in the hands of the courts. Okay, no, thank you. No, it is still thank in the hands Thank you very much, Dr. Bukhari. I'm so yeah. sorry I'm having to cut you off they because our time charge. is up. Uh, I really want to thank our guests, Dr. Raza Bukhari in Philadelphia, Mr. Mohammad Akram Sheikh in Lahore, and Mr. Frederick Breyer right here in our studios. Thank you for watching. Hope you'll join us again next week. Goodbye.